On a flight to New York last week, I watched an, an Academy Award-winning short film called The Irish Goodbye. Now, sadly, you cannot stream this on any platform in the US right now, at least as of last week when I checked. So if you really want to see it, you're going to have to fly somewhere on JetBlue this month. <laughs> Sorry. But it was so good, I'm going to share a little bit of it with you anyway. As the movie opens, two estranged young adult brothers named Turlo and Lorcan, it's an Irish film, right? OK, Turlo and Lorcan have been reunited by the death of their mother. Turlo has made the trek from his London flat all the way back to the brothers' family farm that is nestled in the northern Irish countryside. His plan was to sell the property as soon as possible and settle his brother Lorcan in to live with their aunt. You see, Lorcan has Down's syndrome and really could not live independently. Lorcan, on the other hand, opposed Turlow's intentions vigorously. He wanted to keep living on the farm, the only home he had really ever known. So when a local priest produces a bucket list, you know, a bucket that the coroner had found in their mother's pocket, Lorcan convinces Turlow to stay with him long enough for them to complete the 100 items on the bucket list, all with their mother's ashes in tow. A series of wacky escapades follows, from the two of them, the rottling down a dirt path and a wheelbarrow, to sitting for an oil portrait, to sort of flying with balloons, if you can envision that. The brothers complete the items on the list one by one, until they get to item 99. And I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but suffice it to say that when Turlo realizes that as desperately as he wanted to escape the drudgery of their farm, and as strenuously as he resisted taking responsibility for his younger brother, embracing those very things might actually be the right path for him after all. Jesus said this to his disciples, if any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Self-denial. It wasn't Turlow's first choice, and it's not terribly popular these days either. I mean, not that it ever really was, to be honest. I mean, the story of Adam and Eve illustrates that we human beings have been struggling with self from the very beginning. And from that time to this, each one of us here every day is faced with a choice. Will we honor and follow the good and gracious God who loves us, who created us, and wants our very best? Or will we instead enthrone self and chase after our own instinctual cravings for power or prestige or comfort in whatever direction those urges may point us? Now let me be perfectly clear. Christian self-denial, the kind that Jesus is talking about, does not mean that we should revile our bodies because they're somehow intrinsically bad and should be punished. No. Genesis affirms that creation is good. Our bodies and this material world and everything that's wonderful in it are expressions of God's goodness. Neither does Christian self-denial mean we must perpetually sublimate our God-given desires, hopes, and dreams. No, true Christian self-denial consists of making the choice to enthrone Christ alone on our hearts rather than choosing a tyranny of self.
Taking up our cross simply means that when our impulses and immediate desires conflict with the path that the Holy Spirit has revealed for us, especially when that path is challenging or painful, that we choose God's way rather than our own, trusting that true, abundant life waits on the other side of our difficulty. Jesus models this for us as he understood that his path led to the cross. His struggle with Peter today in our gospel reading reveals his commitment to follow the Father's lead in all things. Later, Jesus confessed honestly in the Garden of Gethsemane that he would prefer to avoid the terrible suffering that awaited him. But ultimately, Jesus affirms, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Friends, denying self, taking up our cross, and following Jesus does mean that at times we will suffer. At times we will experience pain. But here's the thing. Every human being who is alive experiences suffering. No one gets through this life without some deep wound. It is an escapable part of the human condition. But when we allow God to guide us through our hurt, when we invite the Holy Spirit to be with us, working in our pain, when we trust that God truly loves us and has our best interests at heart, then our suffering can be redeemed, transformed into something powerful and beautiful. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection reveals this and makes the way possible for us as well. But here's another seemingly paradoxical truth. Living this way is not drudgery, as some would have us believe. Following Christ is actually an indescribable adventure. It's not about walking around with a long, drawn face or wearing dowdy clothes and never having any fun. No, it's about being free to receive all the good that God has for us, living as children of the Most High God without being enslaved to money or prestige or any lesser good. So this morning, I ask each of you and myself, who is reigning on the throne of your heart today? Is it God or is it self? Where are your own impulses bumping up against the path that God has set before you? And how are you responding? Sometimes denying self involves the pain of giving up an addiction or ending an unhealthy relationship. In others, it may mean rearranging finances to care for a family member or even contribute to a ministry in need. And in some instances, across time and in places in the world today, taking up our cross quite literally means laying down our life for the love of Christ. But often, it looks a lot like the Irish goodbye when we realize that a path we want so urgently for ourselves, the one we think will lead to our emancipation, isn't what we think at all. And it's the humble path, the one that honors the needs of others, that is the true path of life. When we surrender to God's will in those moments, when we deny ourselves and follow Christ, we find true, abundant life indeed. Amen.